The Neo Forza MDK5 is the latest DDR5 RAM kit launched by the Gold Key Corporation and their consumer brand Neo Forza. The MDK5 RAM kit is advertised to offer a good performance with no thrills, no RGB and no special graphics. Instead, this kit has an all-black design with an aluminum-made heatsinks and a wide compatibility for both AMD and Intel systems. And in this review, we'll put this RAM kit to the test. The Neo Forza MDK5 is an interesting DDR5 RAM kit. For starters, it is available in only black and with no RGB LEDs. A rare thing these days, in addition, these RAM kits are available in several capacity variants, 32GB, 96, 128 and perhaps a few others. In this review, we are using the 96GB variant and that's 96GB in a 2-module configuration which means that each has a capacity of 48GB. This particular RAM kit is running by default at 6000 MHz with the timings 40, 40, 40 and 72 and a voltage of 1.3 volts. In terms of the design, this RAM kit is simple. It has an all-black heatsink with only some graphics present on both sides. In fact, these white graphics are meant to highlight the shape of the metal heatsink and they do that with simplicity and elegance. Other graphics elements present on the heatsink include the MDK5 name and the Neo Forza logo. The MDK5 uses an all-black heatsink and has a dual-side PCB design. This means that the memory chips are installed on both sides of the PCB and thus both sides of the heatsink must have thermal pads and do some passive cooling as well. Speaking of thermal pads, these heatsinks are glued in place with the help of thick thermal pads. This means that you need to heat up the RAM stick before you attempt to pry away both sides of the heatsink, otherwise you will bend them. This is common knowledge, so it's not an issue and in fact these thermal pads are of good quality and should last a long time. The internal components used on this RAM kit are of good quality, obviously. In terms of DDR5 memory modules, we only really have three manufacturers nowadays, Micron, Samsung and SK Hynex, the latter being regarded as the better performing one in terms of overclocking and stability. The memory chips used on this RAM kit are indeed SK Hynex and as for what type of die they are, they are likely M die. However, the serial number is not yet updated on the internet and we cannot be sure. Even with this information missing, we can gouge the performance of these RAM memory chips when we get to the overclocking session of this review. One of the differences between DDR4 and DDR5 is the usage of a PMIC or Power Management Integrated Circuits. This means that instead of the motherboard regulating the voltage of the RAM kit, this chip does it instead. For testing, I have a new DDR5 platform based around the Intel i7 13700K and a Biostar Z790 Valkyrie motherboard. For all RAM testing, the CPU is running at its factory settings to keep things even. The first test is Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty, the latest DLC and only expansion for the Cyberpunk 2077 video game. This new expansion brings out a lot of performance and graphical improvements and it has its own benchmark which makes testing this game a breeze. The game is running at 1080p with all graphics settings turned at their maximum values and RTX is switched on as well. And in this test, the Neo Forza MDK5 is ahead of the only other DDR5 RAM kit that I've tested so far, a team group T-Force Delta. The next test is Shadow of the Tomb Raider, also running at 1080p with all graphics settings at their maximum values and vertical synchronization disabled. And in this test, the MDK5 is ahead by a few frames per second and overall delivers a steady performance throughout the entire benchmark. And now we are done with the games and we start with the synthetic benchmarks. And the first test is Cyberbench R20 which is a new and popular CPU benchmark that is influenced by the RAM used and, of course, your entire system. And in this test, the MDK5 is ahead by a few points. Again, I just switched to the DDR5 platform and thus not a lot of memory keys have been tested, but fear not, that will change pretty soon. The next test is Cinebench R23, another popular benchmark that is often used to measure the performance of both the CPU and the RAM installed in the system and here the story repeats itself, we see MDK5 ahead by a few points. The final test is AIDA64 Extreme, one of the best benchmarks for RAM testing as it has its own suite just for that. And here the MDK5 is ahead in both read, copy and write speeds as well as the latency. 
In terms of the overclocking, things are different on the DDR5 platform than what we are used to on DDR4, but the differences between DDR4 and DDR5 will be explained in a different video. For now, I tried to overclock this RAM kit with the factory timings of 40, 40, 40, 77 and bumped the voltage to 1.4 just in case. This RAM kit has an XMP frequency of 6000 MHz out of the box and I've managed to overclock it to 7000 MHz using the standard timings but tweaked the voltage and the memory controller voltage as well. As for the benefits of overclocking, in Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty we see a gain of roughly 5 frames per second between 6000 and 7000 MHz. Not a big leap in performance, but an improvement nonetheless. I am sure that lowering the timings would result in a better performance overall, but lowering the timings also means lowering the frequency and thus it's a bit fiddly with the settings. The Neo Forza MDK5 is a great DDR5 RAM kit, not only is it a large capacity kit in a 2 module configuration which allows you to expand your RAM even more, but this kit has no RGB LEDs, needs no software to work properly and delivers on the promised performance. If there's something to complain about, it's the lack of availability in certain parts of the world, but that can be addressed later. The overclocking potential with this kit is great and I think it's the highlight of the MDK5. I was able to push it to 7000 MHz with relative ease, while other users have reported this kit to go as high as 7800 MHz, but don't quote me on that. When looking at the overall package, the MDK5 is worth a try not only for its performance which is good, but for its simple design that will blend in nicely with an all black system or with a system that has no RGB LEDs. If you like this review, then you might consider subscribing for more and if you want to support me in a direct way, then in the description below you will find the links for both the Patreon and the Star pages of this channel.